Good morning, I'm Mabel Jung and you're watching the World Congress Executive Interviews Zone. Thank you so much for joining us. And right now we have Dr. Paul Rothman who is CEO of Johns Hopkins and he's doing our interview right now. Good morning, Dr. Rothman. How are you today? Good morning, Mabel. Very well. How are you? Very well. And I know that you just finished your discussion in front of the attendees here at the World Healthcare Congress. What was the key message you wanted to share? So I think uh, the discussion uh, surrounded around value and how we bring value to the healthcare system. And I think the message was that to do that, you have to engage uh, the delivery system, the nurses, the physicians, but also the patients uh, and try to understand really what will bring value to them and their families. Okay, so how is that different from what we've been experiencing all along? Well, I think, you know, we've had historically a very fragmented healthcare delivery system. Uh, that could be a physician in an office, that could be a hospital not caring about what, really not, it's not not caring, but not being involved in what happens to the patient after they leave. And the patient has never really, really been thought to be a valuable partner in that decision making. I think now we understand that to provide true value to our healthcare system, we have to all think about the patient experience from the time they park their car in the hospital to when they leave the hospital to when they then transition the care outside the hospital, when they go home, who cares for them there. So I think to make sure that that experience is a great experience for the patient, that they get well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that we do that in a way that can try to reduce costs. I think everyone needs to be involved in those decisions, the nurse, the physician, the hospital administrator, and the patient and their family. Okay, so now that we've gotten these different moving pieces to talk more frequently about how to do this well, what are the important things to put in place to make sure that that happens? Well, I think one of the, the things that's going to drive this change is technology. And so as we're just uh, moving to a, a electronic medical record for our entire healthcare delivery system, we try to, we need to make all those EMRs, electronic medical records, interoperable. They have to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then really also get the patient to be involved in learning about their health care too. I think technology will drive a lot of it. Once we also have this technology, we'll get the data, the health analytics can then analyze and tell us where there are opportunities to bring more value to the system. Where, what's the best way to take care of a patient, how outcomes will get better, and maybe how to bring down costs at the same time. Mm -hmm. Do you we have the right um, infrastructure in place to keep hospitals uh, as innovation hubs? Um, and what is being done at Johns Hopkins that might be a good example for what other hospitals can do? I think it's my, one of my biggest concerns because um, I think uh, innovation is not cheap. And to be truly innovative, you probably make mistakes. That's what true innovation is. Otherwise, you're really not, not really trying to push the barriers. And so I think m one of my big concerns is that the healthcare system uh, values uh, innovation. And that could be in, in a type of care and a new therapy. Uh, I'll give you an example. You know, we just announced a major gift from uh, Mayor Bloomberg and Sidney Kimmel and others for $125 million to help immuno-oncology. Mm -hmm. Now, immuno-oncology has the potential and is already curing cancers, metastatic melanoma, metastatic lung cancer that were thought to be death sentences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's innovation. And then the healthcare system has to understand how that brings value. And if you think about that value, it's a great value to the patient and their family. It ends up being very expensive. Yes. And so who's going to pay for that, uh, that innovation? And so obviously on the discovery side, we have great benefactors that come in. The federal government through NIH and NSF and others will also help fund the ba basic discovery. But then as it translates into therapies that are expensive, but I would argue bring great value. Right. How are we going to figure out who, who pays for that? One of the things that you still love to do is to teach medical students. And um, I've read that you do feel it's almost a guilty pleasure because you don't have time for it sometimes. But are we attracting still the kinds of uh, individuals that can face some of the challenges? Yeah. 
in the medical sector now? So as I said, uh, I said in our discussion today, if you ever worry about the fate of this country or health care, uh, I can introduce you to 121st year medical students at Hopkins, and then you will feel that the health care system will be okay, that your care will be okay as we get older, and that the country's in a good position. So I, I actually think the medical students, and not, that's not just true of Hopkins. I would argue medical students, I was also the dean at the University of Iowa, mm -hmm. and I, it's the same thing there. I think uh, for all we worry about the, the young people in this country, certainly the ones that go to med school are spectacular and care, want, understand that health care will change, understand that, that we have to understand how to bring value to the country, mm -hmm. bring down costs, but increase quality at the same time. And so I, I think that they're part of the solution, not part of the problem. That's fantastic news. And finally, um, why do you make a time in your busy calendar for the World Health Care Congress? Uh, you know, part of what we want to do at Hopkins is to ensure that uh, people, un people understand not only the value of Hopkins, the value of academic medicine, and I think we feel it's important for us to influence the discussion. And so we always make time for these. Uh, it's important to be part of the solution here, and Hopkins, because of our tradition in innovation, uh, has always been and will continue to be part of the solution in healthcare. Fantastic. Dr. Rothman, thank you so much oh, for your thank time. Thank you for talking to me today. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thank you for watching.